Who better to talk about tourism growth in Uganda than John Sempebwa, the Deputy CEO of Uganda Tourism Board? Good morning, Chief. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. What's it like selling a country like this one? Is it a tall order or is it something you do with relative ease? Because, you know, sometimes this country speaks for itself or does it? It's much, m m much easier than we expected. Is it? Yes. How come then we do not seem to see results? You see, results? Uh, well, the results are there, but uh, you see, when uh, your child is scoring 70%, that's not bad. But you know for a fact that this child of yours has potential for 95%. There is a problem. But which specs are you using? Because you've just had the budget. Mm -hmm. There was news there. You've just come back from Namugongo. Mm. There was news there. <laughs> which news dissipates, you know, as soon as the function ends. You talk about the budget. Yes. The allocation to tourism. Yes. Are you a happy lot as a tourism board? Are you happy with that allocation? I think happiness is not the best parameter to use. Do you think it will go a long way in doing what needs to be done to sell this country? You see, you, you must analyze where we're coming from to answer that question. A few years ago, we were fighting. Budget allocation for tourism was about a billion shillings. Last year, February, budget allocation was two billion. July, it pushed up, it went up to six billion. As we speak, there's about 11.4 billion from government mm. and another lot available from the World Bank. Development partners are running away from agriculture and coming to support tourism. So for me, it's not about the funds, but what we're going to do with the funds. You see, when you know that something works for you, like in this case, uh, Uganda has a comparative advantage in as far as tourism is concerned. We have literally everything here. Everything. You don't have to go elsewhere. And uh, 11 billion shillings, not so bad. But are we putting our money where our mouths are? Because you see, with business, the more you put, the more you rake out of it. This country has potential to rake billions of dollars, you know, I, from I, tourism. I, I, but I, I, we do not seem to be tapping that. I agree with you. And it's about uh, innovation. Mm. Tourism is a funny business. You cannot sell this country to foreigners before you sell it to the people in the country. That's where we need to start. Exactly. Now, most, some of this 11 billion is going to be put on clusters. Mm. Every Ugandan comes from a region in this country. There are about 11 clusters that we're going to support. These clusters have products, but they're not developed. Places where things happen, very rich history, are just full of grass. Let me give you an example of Wangley. When you were in school, you studied the rich story of Jipira and Labongo. Mm. You know, where these two split, and they're a very rich story, where these two split now is a military camp, and nobody goes there. So we, we are sensitizing military to break these places up. Fort Particle, places in grass, there's Guru Guru Hills. If you remember your history where the Lamogi mm. rebellion happened and then some Lamogis went and formed the Lamogi in, 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 in uh, Busoga area. So all these clusters have very interesting things to sell, mm. but these places are dilapidated. So some money is going to be put at clusters. Once they are organized, they are going to develop, we're going to help them develop products, help them to market. And within Uganda, you're going to have about 11 different experiences which are run by the people. Mm -hmm. So that is where we're going to start. Two, this country is not branded yet. It, it is branded. I mean, I must say a brand is what people think about you. If you walk on the street and ask, many people will say, ah, you know that smart man who's always on NTV. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there's a brand. Ugandas, mm -hmm. people have perceptions about Uganda. Is it war? Whatever it is. But trust me, as UTB, that is not the brand we want to help sell tourism. So we are going to embark on rebranding this country. And this is going to be a collective effort by everybody in Uganda. We're going to, it's going to take us a whole year, but we're going to come to you and tell you whatever this brand is. Now, for example, if we choose the brand Uganda, friendliness. It's about friendliness. We have to go and talk to BCJ. We have to go and talk to everybody who's striking. We have to go and talk to MPs to always portray that brand. If it, if, if it comes out as friendliness, 
So it, it you're insinuating that the BCJs and some of these notorious MPs are portraying the picture of unfriendliness? No, no, no. I'm saying they mm. need <laughs> to portray mm. friendliness. And we're going to talk to everybody. Mm. Does Everyone. that include government, I hope? Everyone. Sometimes I see these police officers acting very unfriendly. That's where we're there going to start. There are some good ones, though. Th th that's if. That's if. That's a chosen, you know, positioning mm -hmm. that we need. Remember, we already have the PAL of Africa. We are going to investigate that as well and make sure it makes sense to every uh, human being, every Ugandan. So mm -hmm. th there's a lot of work to do. You know, you cannot market something without branding it. You know, the, the, the brand image of, of this country has taken quite a beating. On one hand, you have people who think we're overpriced, we're always at war and diseased, and media has played uh, some, some, some role in this, and we're not blaming anybody. But, but we need to reverse all the negative perceptions, and those who are blank in their heads, we meet tourists at Entebbe, and you ask them, what, what are you expecting? They say, well, I don't know. So, so we need to correct this brand perception. Interesting, and with the media have uh, begun, hopefully we, you know, we should do a lot more. At least we are inviting you here to talk about Uganda. Talking about the vast potential that Uganda has, uh, yes. there's evidence to that effect. Yes. With us here is an accolade. Yes. Uh, maybe if the camera people could help us get to shoot this a little bit closer. This was, what? Well, this is what? East African Community, Ministry of Tourism, Trade and Industry. This is 2008. Tell us about this. What you see here is the practical bit of the East African community. Mm. East African countries, partner states, have agreed to reward and recognize excellent hotels, hotels that, that, that exhibit highest quality. And, and, and this is the plaque that, that, that is used all over East Africa. Now, for the first time in Uganda, this week, I'm not talking next year, or this, this week, uh, the government of Uganda, of course through us as Uganda Tourism Board, is going to recognize five-star, four-star, three-star, and two-star hotels. Mm. Since time immemorial, even before independence, this is going to be the first time that Ugandans will know that Hotel A is five star. Serena Hotel. I did not Let say any say name. It. I did not say, as you can <laughs> clearly see, the announcements will be made by none mm. other than the Prime Minister. This is a huge event. Uh, all guests are invited, and we hope that this will communicate to everybody who has a hotel to start providing better services. There are hotels, for example, which are claiming on their websites to be five star, and they are not five star. We have asked them to please remove that miscommunication. There are hotels which are charging five star prices, and yet mm. they're not even one star. We have uh, told them to behave accordingly. There are accommodation places which are wrongly named. You know, these places in Kampala which are called lodges. Mm -hmm. They are not lodges. A lodge is a very prestigious, accommodation place which must be around a tourism attraction mm. like a park like a, like a forest so that's why you have things like para lodge chobe lodge all these places called lodges in kampala they have mm. to change their names they are motels that call themselves hotels you know and and oh, a motel you know. must be on the runway so mm. there's a lot of uh, uh, misnaming and, and um, misbranding and claims which are false in the accommodation uh, sector. What qualifies for a five star? Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, the rules are very clear. Mm. The rules for a five star hotel are very clear. And they are laid out in these uh, regulations signed by the Honorable Minister, Dr. Mariam Tagamba. They are based on about 16 parameters. And mm. there's a whole 72 page booklet which is used by assessors to t determine a five star hotel. Three assessors go out to a hotel, spend the whole day, and look at the bedroom, the kitchen, the parking, the bar, size of room, uh, cleanliness of the kitchen. There's so many parameters which, which are used. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. uh, a five-star hotel is one that scores at least 50% on each parameter. So you, 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 you cannot dodge. If you don't have a heated swimming pool, if, you do not, if your rooms are not four, four, four by four, square meters, if your bar is not well stocked, if you don't have a, a qualified manager, if you don't have a human resource manager, you know, it's a whole range of uh, uh, parameters that we look at mm. to, ident to classify you as five star, uh, three, f four star, or three star, and it's very transparent. It is so transparent that yesterday when we met the 29 hotels which are going to be recognized, 
and partially you know, told them their rating, nobody complained at all, which means it's so transparent that we share it with you and you can self-assess. So by the time we come to classify your hotel, you probably already know that you are five star, four star, or three star. One of the things that buttresses tourism in a country such as this one is customer care. Now that you talk about hotels and yes. then wherever, you yes. know how these guests are received at the airport, how Absolutely. they go about, etc., etc. Customer care. Absolutely. You say that Ugandans are friendly people, and I agree to a large extent. I think we are, but sometimes, you know, instead of customer care, we have customers care. <laughs> you go to this place, I don't know, it could be a hotel or whatever the case might be, and uh, yeah. This receptionist looks at you and uh, clearly your presence is good, but your absence is better. <laughs> How do we bridge this gap? Because you see, it's eating us up. We have yeah, good products yeah, to sell, you know, but the people who are selling it, the frontliners, sometimes they do a shambolic job. You know, this is a skill. It's like you here presenting. You know, people don't know that it is a skill. Not everybody can come here day in, day out and have sense to sell like you do, sir. Thank so, you. <laughs> so, so wh wh what is it that we have to do? Mm. We have to train these people. And Part of this 11 billion is going nowhere else but to train all these Ugandans working in all these places yeah. such that, like you say, they do not give customer care, but they give customer care. Many of them do it without knowing, for mm. example, that that is scaring away the customer. So it, it, it's a skill which is not taught in our schools, but a skill that you need every single day of your life. So instead of teaching the prairies, the, 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 uh, what are these things they used to the teach us? In Canada, all, Canada, all, all those the things. The problems we're, of New York. We're, and we're, so we're also lobbying the Ministry of Education to remove some of these things, which mm. uh, may not be very useful, but, but to impart some of these uh, skills in, 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 in school. So give, give us a year, and, and every hotel you're going to go to, you're going to get a very good smile. I hope you don't read it, you don't misread it otherwise, but, but, but we hope that. We, 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 we're going to train all the people in all these hotels. We have to do it. It's our job. You need the partnership of the citizenry uh, because much of the time we'll say government, and in this case Uganda Tourism Board, yes. you're not doing what you should be doing. And maybe we should, to some extent, we should hold you accountable because yes. Uh, yes, that's what should. we mandate you to do. Yes, you but, but we have a role to play too. What's, yes, what's our role as the citizenry? You keep talking about us uh, not patronizing yes. these places. You know, yes. uh, some places as simple as the zoo, for example, etc., yes. etc. Et yes. How do we go along the way? Was the last time? When was the last time you went to, to that place you called the zoo? zoo? Uh, I think either this, early this year or late last year. You know, things have changed a bit. You mm. can walk with an elephant. Huh? You can walk with an elephant and talk to an elephant and it will talk to you back in its language if you can. That sounds like a Nigerian that. movie. No, what are you telling no, us, John? <laughs> the, you see, all these places are, are 30 minutes away from here. Mm. You can feed the giraffes. We had a supermodel last year with whom we climbed the mountain. She, is, she was all over in the papers feeding giraffes. You can uh, romance a python, uh, and, and this mm -hmm. is, you can, you know, feel a python and enjoy a python for 30 minutes. You can ride the camel. Things are changing. Take your children out there and see what that place has to offer. But away from that, so, many, so, so, so much is changing in, in tourism. I already told you that, one, Ugandans were coming to you for rebranding this country. Mm. We want you to tell us what do you want tourists out there to think about our country. This is going to take a whole year. Uh, we have now money for media. We are going to communicate a lot using the best station in the country, which is obvious. Everybody knows that. So we're coming out in a soft voice like uh, you hear me now so that we work together to reposition this country like it used to be. In 1962, Uganda was top three countries visited in, in Africa. Today, as we speak, we position nine. Now we have to get, regain our glory, and, and we're going to do it with you. Uh, there's so much coming up, I can't summarize it now. Uh, we're going to hire, for the first time, uh, three farms. These three farms are going to market this country in Germany, in, uh, in the UK and the US. We've been relying more on expos. This is a one-off. You don't get time to actually show the entire beauty. So now we have white men who are going to wake up in these countries and sing Uganda, 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 Uganda. So all these negative perceptions, you see we meet people in Canada and everywhere, and you talk about Uganda, and they say, hey, how is Idi Amin, said you man. 
Do you still hear that, hear that to this day? Yeah, yeah. Idi Amin is long dead and buried. He's so buried that he's not even buried in Uganda. He's, he's long gone. Then they talk about Ebola. And you tell them that Ebola is nearer to your country than it is to Uganda. So there's a lot of misinformation out there. You know, this gay thing. They think mm. that the moment if you're gay, you step off the plane at Entebbe, you're Im Im immediately you're going to be leashed. I mean, nobody cares if you're gay or not, I think. Uh, it's that's true. You just walk in, go to your room. Has anybody ever broken into your room to see what you're doing? They would have a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you see, there's a lot of misinformation about Uganda. And some of it is perpetrated by our enemies who, who like to... Like, for example, uh, Al-Shabaab is busy hitting some places. Our security mechanism has five on this thing. We've just come from Namugongo. The only scare we got is, that is two, I think, two people died because of the crowd. You know, mm. there's no children because of, because of Al-Shabaab. So, uh, fellow Ugandans, tourism is now more valuable than coffee. Tourism is now more valuable than, than, than farming and agriculture. If you want to know how to participate, go to your cluster. We are coming down to wherever you are in your cluster. If you're in West Nile, look for the West Nile cluster. If you're in Acholi, look for Hillary Unek, the Honorable Minister, and look for the Acholi cluster. If you're in Lango, look for Sam Angola. If you're in Busoga, look for Honorable Balidawa. If you're in, in, in Bale, look for Amos Wekesa. If you're in Buganda, go to Buganda Kingdom. If you're in Kalangala, there's a cluster. If you're in Barra, there is Gantone, you know, there's a cluster there. If you're in Chigezi, there's a cluster there coordinated by a very senior person in this country. If you're in Toro, there is a cluster there called Renzori. For the first time, you know, tourism is uniting people. Uh, when we went and promoted Imbalu, I saw with my own two eyes Nandala Mafabi hugging Werike. Mm. Now, normally these are people who are loggerheads, mm -hmm. but because of tourism, you know, we're uniting Ugandans. So we, we, we appeal to every Ugandan to wait. We're going to come to you through the cluster. We rebrand this country, and the opportunities will come. You see, every time a tourist comes to this country, it is not UTB which gets the money. Think about your brother who has a... Is a ripple effect. You know, and, and, and the best ripple effect is in tourism. The taxi guy at the airport, the restaurant along the way, mm. maybe the Nkumba chick who will talk to these tourists and, and show them this country, the discotheque <laughs> in Kampala, the, the, the Boda Boda guy, the, 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 what is this rolled thing people like to eat? Chicken? No, chapati Rolex. roll. The Rolex guy. Mm. You know, everybody benefits from tourism. The, um, these uh, telecom companies, the, the Wi Fi companies, TV, because this guy has to watch TV. Mm -hmm. The oil companies, everybody's in the tourism value chain. Every $1,000 that comes here doesn't go to the hotels only. It is spread to everybody. So tourism is everybody's business. Let us not participate in war. Let's not participate in, in strikes. Let the politicians sort their game. And Uganda will always be here. If we just go through this election very peacefully, Trust me, we're going to get more visitors than all the other East African countries combined. Let's ensure of that. June Sempebo, Deputy right. CEO of Uganda Tourism Board. Right. Thanks for talking to us this morning. My pleasure. And keep selling Uganda. My pleasure. Coming up is my opinion. Sir Winston Churchill, you remember the man? He was governor of the British Protectorate and managing a couple of others that the British were running, the colonies in Africa. After doing a round of all the British holdings here in Africa, he went back to the UK and was giving a report to their parliament. And in a long spread, he said, and I'll quote a few things, concentrate on Uganda. Nowhere will a little money go so far. Uganda is green from left to right. And he said a couple of other things. And he ended with that famous quote, Uganda is indeed the pearl of Africa. I think we need to do a lot more. We need to sell this country. It's got lots of potential. Let's each and every one of us play our part. You see, if we do nothing and say, look, we've got everything here, it will happen on its own. I read a quote, an interesting quote somewhere that, look, anybody who does business without advertising is like a man who winks at a woman in the dark. There is no result at the end of the day. You'll wink and wink, but she's not seeing what you are doing. You know, so Uganda, we've got potential. Let's harness this potential. Let's sell this potential out there, and things will get better.
That's the big story for today. Thanks a bunch for joining us. Coming up in a bit is Everyday Life.